The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated by independent research the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And Signal gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Career Man. Charles Conley was in great form. He knew as he spoke that his words were making an impression on the 20 important businessmen seated around the long oaken table in the conference room. And to Charles Conley, the impression was the thing he wanted to achieve. The speech itself, only the problem, means to the end. It's ridiculous to blame our police forces for the current epidemic of traffic accidents. It's too big a job for any police force to control the number of cars on the road today. But reckless driving must stop. And that's why each and every one of us, as self-appointed citizen police, must cooperate in bringing to a halt the wave of lawlessness. Twenty important men, Charles. Twenty business leaders. And you're making the most of a heaven-sent opportunity to impress them. And when it's over... The applause tells you that the message struck home, right down to the last hypocritical word. Thank you a lot. By George Charles, you certainly told us. Thank you, Mr. Frazier. And I'm going to tell that boss of yours. He should have been here tonight. He ought to know what kind of a man he has in his organization. Well, that's very kind of you, Mr. Frazier. Very kind. Oh, not at all. You deserve something for these ideas of yours. I'm going to talk to him tomorrow. Sounds wonderful, Charles. I wish I could have been there. Oh, I wish you could have been too, Sheila. I tell you, I've been waiting years for this moment. The biggest men in town were there. Wonderful, Charles. But, dear, don't you think we should go home now? It's late. Go home? In the middle of our celebration? Uh, we're going to have another drink. No, I don't care for Harry, you. you're neglecting us. Be right there, Mr. Conley. Please, Charles, you've had enough. Now, don't be foolish. <laughs> oh, sweet little Sheila. Always worrying. It was the same when I got mixed up in that trial last year against Barney Cole. <laughs> you thought I was foolish then, too. <laughs> I didn't want anything to happen to you, that's all. I wouldn't testify against anyone unless I was Barney very Cole sure. Barney Cole was no good, Sheila. He deserved what he got, and yes, I... Yes, I know, Charles. And you moved forward another step in your career. Now, don't spoil it, Sheila. You should have been there tonight and heard my speech. Nothing can stop me now. Oh, I wish you weren't counting on that promotion so much. I'd hate to see you disappointed. Oh, not a chance. They liked me, Sheila. Everybody there. When it gets back to the company, I'm a cinch for a vice presidency. But... Yes, Mr. Conley? Oh, two more of the same, Harry. No, we're leaving. Now, wait a minute. The storm's much worse than it was, Mr. Conley, if you ask me. Nobody's I... asking you. I know my capacity. But, Charles, we've such a long drive. And lots of cops out tonight, Mr. Conley. What is this, a conspiracy? I said I wanted a drink. Mrs. Conley's in such a hurry, she can go home alone. No. Bring him whatever he wants, Harry. I'll wait. Charles. Sheila, 
Let go of my arm. That was in the ditch. Slow down, Charles, please. We're not going fast. Well, then be more careful. Oh, oh I wish you'd let me drive. <laughs> not in this storm. I know what I'm doing. Oh, we shouldn't have stayed so long. The storm is much worse. Will you stop complaining? We're only about a half a mile to go. Oh. But in all this rain... And... Charles, you've got to slow down. I can't stay... Charles, look out. What are you There's a man on the road. You're going to hit him. Ah! Look out! Look out! But it's too late, isn't it, Charles? Too late for the man in front of your speeding car to jump clear. There's a helpless skidding sensation as the car lurches across the wet pavement and then a sickening thud. A moment later, you're out of the car, racing here. back through the dark. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry, old man. I'm sorry. Here, here, let me help you. Are you sorry? Good Lord. What is it, Charles? Is he... Oh. He's dead, Sheila. There's nothing we can do for him. Oh, Charles. You'd better get back in the car. But what are we going to do? You'll have to report it right away and... And they'll know you've been drinking. Get back in the car, Sheila. If only you'd listen to me. Charles, what are you going to do? They're, they're not going to find him here, Sheila. Not tonight. What? But you can't move him. You've got to report... I'm not reporting anything. The police can make up their own story. Charles! Don't you realize what it would mean? My chances with the company, they'd be ruined. But it was an accident. The police will know I've been drinking. You said so yourself. Now go on, Sheila. Back to the car. I'll take care of this. You'll only make it worse, Charles. If, if ever they find out... They won't. Now go on. Do as I say, Sheila. We haven't all night. But Charles, I... All right. I'll wait in the car. You watch uncertainly as Sheila turns, starts back through the rain to the car. Somehow you're not at all sure of her, are you, Charles? But you're sure of what you must do, and you turn and lift the limp form of the man you struck, carry it across a narrow rain-filled ditch to a thick growth of bushes, ease it in behind them. If he's found here in a week or a few days, it won't matter, will it, Charles? Because they'll never connect it with tonight and you. Walking back to the car, you're thankful that it happened away out here in the country. You're thankful, too, that you're so close to home and that it's pouring rain. There'll be no telltale footprints or tire marks in the morning. Charles. Yes? I, I'm afraid... We're doing wrong, Charles. Forget it, Sheila. It's all over. I can still see him lying Stop there. Stop talking about it. No one else saw him. Just pretend it never happened, Sheila. That's the best way. It's easy to say, isn't it, Charles, that it never happened. But it did happen. And you can't shut it out of your mind when you and Sheila reach home. You toss nervously in bed, reliving the accident over and over again in your mind, wondering if you'll get away with it. Wondering if Sheila is going to be a problem. She didn't say much, did she, Charles? You wish you could see if she's lying awake now, thinking the kind of thoughts that you're thinking. Wild, turbulent thoughts, like the storm that continues to rage all night long. At last, you drift into a deep sleep. When you awaken, the sun is shining, streaming in through the windows. The sky is brilliant and clear. The storm has passed. You dress hurriedly, go down to breakfast. You can hear Sheila moving about in the kitchen. Wait for what she's going to say. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, dear. Uh, breakfast ready? In a minute. Here, I'll pour you some coffee. Charles, in case you've been wondering about what stand I'm going to take... 
And you know that I love you very much. Well, of course I know. I'm so not... that's all there is to it, Charles. You needn't worry about anything. Not ever. I... I think my mind has been made up for a long time. Sheila. You don't understand. It's just that I had dreams once, Charles. About what we were going to do. Where we were going. Together. And don't you worry about us. We're still going places. Yes, Charles. Wherever you want us to go. It isn't just me. It's I... all right, dear, really. It's been all right for a long time. But I... I guess I only became aware of it last night. You... You're not unhappy. I'm your wife, Charles. I want to be with you and help you. Oh, oh Sheila, you're wonderful. <laughs> You know, I was nervous about you for a while. You can forget it now. I know. <laughs> well, let's have breakfast. Nothing like... Well, company. Charles, you don't suppose... Nonsense. It's probably the mail carrier. It's a Sunday. There's no mail on Sunday. Well, then perhaps it's our good neighbor, Mr. Carson. Charles, I'm afraid. There's no need to be. Not since we understand one another. Just... Relaxed. Go on now. See who it is. Yes? Mrs. Conway? That's right. Who? Who is it, darling? Why, it's an officer, dear. A state highway patrolman. <laughs> With the prologue of Career Man, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. But first, some facts for drivers about an item for which you spend about $100 a year, gasoline. To make sure you're choosing for your car the gasoline that's tops in quality, there are just two things to remember. One, in gasoline it takes extra quality to go farther, and two... Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. Yes, it's a fact. Mileage is the best yardstick of gasoline quality. And I'll tell you why. There's only one way any gasoline can put superior performance and extra driving pleasure into your car. And that's by helping your motor run more efficiently. And when your motor runs more efficiently, naturally you see proof of it on your speedometer in mileage. The very thing Signal gasoline is famous for. So there you have it. The reason we're so proud of Signal's good mileage, which has made Signal gasoline known from Canada to Mexico as the go-farther gasoline. And the reason we say, to be sure of the tops in gasoline quality, there are just two things to remember. One, in gasoline it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. Now back to the whistler. Charles, it seems like it's all over, doesn't it? You stand there, the state highway patrolman at your door, your mind groping for answers. How could he know so soon? How could he have found the body of the man you ran down last night in the storm? It doesn't seem possible, does it, Charles? And yet the patrolman is here, and you can't think of a single other reason that would bring him to your door. I wonder if I could step inside, Mrs. Conway? Uh, yes, of course. As Sheila lets him in, you can only think of one thing, Charles, your career and how it's about to be destroyed. You'll never get that promotion now, will you? Your big speech last night on reckless driving, alongside the accusation that the patrolman is about to make, will sound like mockery. Charles, this is... Donovan, Sergeant Donovan. The police? But what? Oh, I didn't intend to alarm you folks. Just thought you and your wife could help us. Help you? Yes, there was an accident last night, out on the highway. A man was run over and killed. An accident? We didn't hear anything. Well, with the storm and all, it's quite possible you didn't. Were you folks in all evening? No, no, we weren't. I 
I made a speech on safety at a conference in town. And Mrs. Conley met me afterwards, and we drove home. I see. You didn't notice anything unusual? Pass anyone on the highway, perhaps? No. It was raining so hard, officer. Charles had to drive so slowly and carefully that... Yes, I understand. Did they uh, identify the man? Yes. His name was John Martin. You didn't know him, did you? John Martin? No. We thought he might have been visiting someone in the neighborhood. We're checking every place along the road. I see. Well, sorry to bother you folks. Well, I'm sorry we can't help. Thanks, Mr. Conley. Hope I don't have to stop by again. Or any time. It's, uh, perfectly all right. As suddenly as the state policeman came, he's gone. And a surge of relief sweeps over you. You sink down on the living room sofa, your knees weak from the strain of the officer's visit. And then a new thought hits you. His manner so casual and matter-of-fact. You wonder if he actually suspects and is trying to draw you out. You hurry to the front window. What is it, Charles? What's the matter? I don't like it, Sheila. The way that officer acted. He seemed perfectly natural, dear. I thought... Wait a minute. Yes. Yes, he is stopping again. They're checking all the houses. Oh, Charles, it's simply that it's on your mind. You, you've got to stop thinking about it. Uh, oh, you're right, dear. Thanks, Sheila. Thanks for standing by me. I just hope they won't be back. It's only ten o'clock. Can't we go for a drive or something? All right, Charles. I'll get my coat. I can't stand being cooped up in this house any longer. Sheila! What is it? They're back. Look, look, another patrol car. What does it mean? I was right. They do suspect something. They're trying to break us down. Charles, they wouldn't do that. We can't admit anything, no matter what happens. Remember that, Sheila. If you still want to go out, we could take the back road. No. No, we'll keep the car in the garage. There might have been tire marks or something. In all that rain... I don't want to take a chance. Now, we've got to stay here, Sheila. Act as if nothing is wrong. It's the only thing to do now. Yes, Charles, it's the only thing to do. But it isn't easy, waiting, pacing the floor, going back and forth to the window, wondering, racking your brain for some other reason for those police cars. As the hours move by, the pressure begins to tell on you, on Sheila. You almost want to run outside, scream at them, ask them why they're there, what they're waiting for. As it begins to grow dark, it's Sheila who gives way first. Charles, don't. I can't stand it. We've got to talk to them. No, Sheila, stop it. It's like I told you last night. We should have gone to the police and told them it was an accident. Be quiet, will you? Do you want them to hear us? Charles. Quiet. Oh, 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 we're all unnerved, Sheila. It's only Frank Williams. The hired man at the Carson place. That's right. I'll let him in. Well, good evening, Frank. Evening, Mr. Connolly. Oh, come in, Frank. Don't stand outside. Oh, hello, Mrs. Connolly. Oh, thank you. I will step in for a minute or two. Was there something special you wanted, Frank? Anything wrong at the Carson? Oh, no, Mrs. Conley. Things are fine over there. Uh, all right if I sit down, I suppose. Something on your mind? Uh-huh. Turkeys, Mr. Conley, turkeys. I lost one last night in the storm. Oh. Oh, what a shame. Yeah, isn't it? Oh, well, no matter. I, I ran across something that'll make up for it. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Yes, Mr. Conley. You know, you folks are well thought of out here. The Carsons think you're a fine neighbor. That's nice to hear, Frank. You should have heard how they praised you to the police. Uh, suppose they dropped in on you? Oh, the, the accident last night. Yeah, the police were here. Certainly are a curious bunch, aren't they? I hate to let them go on wasting their time. I, I don't understand. All right, Mr. Conley, I'll make the picture clear for you, and I'll get right to the point. I dropped by to ask you for $5,000. Charles, have you any idea what he means? I... And, uh, just what am I buying, Frank? <laughs> well, 
Oh, let's say a turkey, Mr. Connolly. The one that got away last night. It got hit on the road. But uh, it wasn't the only thing that got hit. You were... Oh, yeah. I was out there looking around at the time. Oh, oh poor Mr. Martin. You know, it's a shame. It was an accident. Can you understand that? Well, of course it was. Only... Only you you didn't leave it there. I couldn't afford to. Your position? Oh, certainly, Mr. Connie. That's uh, that's what made me think that you'd understand my position, uh, losing that turkey. I thought that we could be uh, neighborly about the whole thing, you know, helpful to one another, you see. Uh, Mr. Carson will take the turkey out of my salary. But this is blackmail. You can't get away with it. If I can't, then Mr. Connie can't get away with hit and run driving. Why, you... Charles, don't... You... Your telephone, Mr. Connolly. You better answer it. Oh, just be a minute. I'll be right here, Mr. Connolly. Yes? Hello, Charles. This is Ballinger. Are you all right? What do you mean? Am I all right? Well, I thought I'd better tip you off. It seems I was right about Barney Cole. Cole? Yes, yeah, that day at the trial said he'd get you. What are you talking about? Well, they're keeping it out of the papers, but he broke out of jail. Suppose you've noticed the police around. The police? Why, well, yes, they've been passing up and down in front of the house all day. Oh, good. You can be thankful, Charles. They're doing it to protect you. What? Well, they didn't want to alarm your wife, but I thought you'd feel better knowing about it. Oh, yes. Thanks a lot. I do feel better. <laughs> You stand there for a moment after hanging up the phone, and then it hits you. It's perfect, isn't it, Charles? The police there to protect you. Barney Cole determined to kill you for sending him to jail. And only one man who knows the truth about your hit-and-run accident, Charles. One man who can ruin you forever. Rip the career you've struggled for out of your hands. The gun feels comfortable in your hands as you take it from the desk drawer. Start slowly back to the living room. Running over the story, you'll tell the police. The unguarded back road. Barney Cole approaching the house unseen in the darkness, bent only on vengeance. It all fits, doesn't it, Charles? And as you walk back into the room, the gun carefully concealed in one hand at your side, you know exactly what to do. Frank. Yes, Mr. Connolly? About that turkey. Yes? You said $5,000? Well, seems a fair enough price to me. And uh, if I decide not to buy? Mm, well, in that case, it's uh, up to us public-spirited citizens to see that things like this are reported. We've all got to do our duty, you know. Yes, I know. Only you're a little late, Frank. Look at the window. The window? Well, I don't see... Any... You... Oh. It's our only way out, Sheila. Now listen to me. We haven't much time. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, in place of the message about signal gasoline usually heard at this point, Signal Oil Company has asked me to devote this time to a chat with you about the community chest drive. Well, frankly, I'm sure there's very little that needs saying. Everyone benefits from the community chest. Almost one out of every two families, directly, the rest of us indirectly, through better community conditions. Community chest services include clinics, hospitals, maternity homes, and day nurseries. Children's Aid, Boy and Girl Scouts, Campfire Girls, the YMCA and YWCA. Also, Aid to the Handicapped, Home for the Aged, the Salvation Army, countless other worthy institutions too numerous to mention here. And who pays for all these services? Everyone who is fortunate enough to have a penny or a dime or a dollar to spare for those who are less fortunate. And you know, there's a wonderful thing about money that you share in this way. Money you spend on yourself brings happiness to only one person. But money that you share with the needy brings happiness to so many. 
including yourself. And now back to the whistler. So a cold-blooded murder was the only way out, Charles. The decision was automatic. It was Williams or your career. And for you, of course, the answer was obvious. Yes. The nightmare that began less than 24 hours ago with a man named John Martin dead on the highway near your house is about to come to its climax in the next few minutes. You had the strength to kill, Charles. You know the same strength will stand by you now when you go out to face the officers. The unknown quantity, of course, is Sheila. John, how could you? Why did you do it? Why did you oh, get hold of yourself, Sheila. Stop, I... I remember what I told you. Barney Cole, you understand? Barney Cole came up to this window here. Wait, I'll break it. You saw him clearly. He shot Williams through the window thinking it was I. You got that? Yes, Charles, yes. All right. Come on now. Here we go. Help! Help! Please! Hey, here we are, officer. Oh, thank heaven you were out there. There he is, officer. Hmm. Yeah, he's dead, all right. Shot in the back. You say you Sheila saw... Sheila saw him. I was just coming in from the kitchen. Yes, I, I recognized him, officer. I... Tried to warn Mr. Williams, but it was too late. He raised his gun and fired. It it was Barney Cole, the man... Barney Cole? He must have escaped from prison. I got a fair look at him, too, officer. I'd know him anywhere. Are you sure? Positive. Uh, I think he took off down the back road to the other highway. I don't think he took off anywhere, Mr. Conley. Uh, You know, it's odd that you bring up Barney Cole. I was on my way here to give you the news. What news? We've been staked out here because we figured this is where Cole would head after his escape. Well, I just heard from the coroner we were wasting our time. Cole made one stop before he came here, Conley. But he did come here. After he'd murdered a man named John Martin and taken his clothes and identification papers. Martin. Charles. Charles. That's right. It was Barney Cole who was run down on the highway last night. Now, suppose you two tell me who really killed Mr. Williams here. That whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure. Drive at sensible speeds. Be courteous and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Willard Waterman and Mary Lansing. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by Rena K. Green, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Next Wednesday, for a full hour of mystery, tune in half an hour earlier. Enjoy The Saint as well as The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.